You're listening to Rock and Sexy Uncensored, bringing you the cutting edge of the entertainment world weekly, hosted by Amber Lynn. Welcome back. We are live around the world on Rock and Sexy Uncensored, broadcasting live on UBNGO.com and live streaming on our blog at Rock and Sexy Uncensored.com. I'm your host, Amber Lynn, and it is my great pleasure to be here with you all tonight. RNSU works overtime to bring you the cutting edge talent from the music and entertainment industries. And guys, tonight is no exception. Our entire show tonight is reserved for metalheads and metal music fans worldwide as we celebrate one of the badass bands of them all. And not just for their music and their amazing talent, but for their longevity. Many great bands produce hit music all the time, but to persevere through challenges and changes life throws at them is what makes legends. And these guys are absolutely that. Like me, they came out of the gate when all the greatest metal hits happened in the 1980s. And since the Bullet Boys' self-titled debut album hit in 1988 with the hit song Smooth Up In Ya, this band has come a long way. Well, the current lineup has changed, I think, once again. It's changed a couple of times. But the man with his finger on the pulse of it all is going to be with us tonight. He's running just a little bit late to the studio, so we're just going to keep ourselves busy. Mark Torian will be with us any minute. The band's current lineup includes the bassist Brad Lang. You will know him from YNT, Burning Rain, Burning Rain. (laughs) The drummer is Fred Aching from Power Flow and Billy Bio. And now, and he is live in the studio. We like to call him Mr. Metal, metal guitarist, metal shredder. He is with Gods and Monsters, Lizzie Borden, Attica 7. I could name so many. Now he's with the Bullet Boys. Ira Black is in the house tonight. <clears throat> Ira. Oh, yeah. My pleasure. Good to, great to see you again. Yeah. I know. It's exciting to see you again. It was bound to happen. I'd end up in the Bullet Boys eventually, right? Because I play with everyone, as everyone already says, you know. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, – I've known Mark a long time, and it's been a great pleasure, uh, you know, joining up with them and writing some new music already and playing a, a handful of shows. Uh, the first show was incredible, actually. We had about five days to put it all together. We ended up playing the Rock Island Fest in uh, Florida with Cheap Trick and Dee Snyder and Brett Michaels and Winger and Warren and all, you know, all these bands. You're kidding. When, when, did, when was this? I didn't even see the... Uh... I didn't even see it. Yeah, that, that was the uh, last weekend, I believe, of January. So th- that's what brought the new lineup together was, you know, the, uh, he had the original lineup back together. They ended up quitting on him a, a, about a week before this festival. Oh, my God. So he was going to just cancel it. He called me up. We'd been working on some music. And he says, I'm going to have to cancel this. I'm like, no, 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 no. Hold on a minute. We can do this. Let's put together a kick-ass lineup. And that's what we did, you know. So we went to the, our some of our go-to guys, Fred Aking on drums and, and Brad Lang bassist, of course. And it was like. Then I guess I said it right. We were talking about how they persevere, and this is what makes legends. And also how the music industry is such a small town, you know, where everybody is in their their gig doing their own thing and it is highly competitive and you know everybody wants the number one spot but at the end of the day it is a small town and people do rely on each other it's like a family especially where it is concerned around the whiskey which i know you guys just recently played at the whiskey again and um we'll talk about jessica chase who is 
What is she at the? What is her actual title? At She's the uh, one of the producers of Ultimate Jam Night. She is one of the producers of Ultimate Jam Night, which produces like the most iconic music legends who all come in to Ultimate just, Jam Night. Yeah, we get to together. Ultimately jam. jam together. Totally. Right? Yeah, yeah. And and I've been a part of that on uh, the 69th episode once before, and we've had. So much. We fun. gave gave away the vagina brand guitar that night. We were giving and, away yeah, free was... vagina, and nobody quite <laughs> understood what we were talking about. It's we a were, guitar. Yeah, but it was definitely packed when we were giving away the guitar oh, on yeah. stage. So here we are, all this time, and and before that, what were you doing leading up to it? Were you just taking a break, or? Yeah, well, for for me, you know, d- during the pandemic, um, you know, obviously that was a hard time for everyone. You know, for various reasons, obviously the the lockdown. Let's start with that, and all the deaths and all the, you know. So that was hard for you know, and us just trying to figure out what's going on in the world. You know, I so, know it was a really difficult and frightening time for everybody that I knew that was in the music industry because so many people are reliant off their touring. You know, it's yeah. not just about the music that you make, but the <clears throat> more piracy wreaks havoc on all of the industries uh people are more and more reliant on going on the road and touring and they make money off their merch whether it's club touring or um or like you said doing these great festivals and that just shut down and we were kind of all in the house going okay this is going to happen for a month or it's going to happen for a couple of months and then it went into six months and then it went into a year and then it was like when the Fuck, is this gonna for, end? for me, it was uh, because, as you know, I'm always very busy. I always just my schedule runs, 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 keeps going. Every once in a while, in the back of my mind, I think, is this ever gonna slow down? Will I ever get a break? You know, just in the back of your mind, you know, because you know sometimes you get tired and worn out. And when the pandemic happened, I, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna use this time to actually take a break and get into some other things. That I feel like are. are but it wasn't a type of break you're thinking. So what I do is I got my recording studio together and, and went deep into recording. I wanted to figure out, you know, crack the code, as they say, on how to get a good sound. Like for myself, like how do I get a good guitar tone in the studio? Like for real, because, you know, I think a lot of musicians, believe it or not, are not happy with the albums they put out and stuff. Because a lot of times other people are mixing it and getting the sounds for them. And we don't always get captured the way that we want. So I thought... I'm going to get my recording studio together and I'm going to figure this out. So that's indeed what I did. I probably wrote somewhere around 250 songs and I played some songs for Mark. That's how we ended up hooking up. We ended up doing a side project. So that project. is what ended up happening. Yeah. And I did see that. With the, We're going to play some of that coming up in just a little bit as soon as we get settled here. Um, it's called Behind the Music. Is that what it's called? There was a there was a, a making of the music video that is out. Yeah, and- so the, the, this is later on. So first, Mark and I were doing a side project outside the Bullet Boys. That's how this whole start, this whole thing started. So we started working on some other music, kind of with a, another project name, uh, you know, in mind. And uh, when the Bullet Boys uh, original lineup split, that's when I joined up with them and. I said, okay, here's my chance now. I'm already working with Mark. So I put together the song, Holy Fuck. And so and we, we, we're we, going to be hearing Yeah, we, we recorded the song, I just mixed wait it, for produced Mark. it. Yeah, totally. And then uh, put together this music video. And we made a little behind the scenes of the music video to put out as a little advertisement. So that's I love what we that have here because today. that is the thing with the fans. They really want to be able to be a part of it. And when they get brought into it, especially like even here with the show now, we wanted to be able to reach out to the fans and show them what we're actually doing in the studio when we're doing all of this stuff. So instead of just doing audio radio, we are now TV media broadcast. So I hope you guys totally. are watching. But we, we, I'm uh, excited for you. Are you excited? Oh, yeah, very much so. Um, literally a couple days after uh, we decided we're putting together this new lineup, we're going to do this festival, I wrote a song. Like, I, I got excited because I was, you know, like I said, having worked in the studio throughout the entire pandemic, I'm to the point now where I can just write at will. Like, I can sit down right now with you on air here and write a song with you and record it. So that's kind of where Too I'm at now. Too bad you didn't so, bring your guitar. 
Yeah, exactly. So, so I end up, uh, you know, putting together the song after two days or something of talking to Mark about joining up with him in Bullet Boy. So I'm like, this is my opportunity. I'm gonna write a Bullet I Boy bet song. I he was finally. relieved. I bet. Oh yeah. He, oh wow. He, he loved what it. What a relief. We started because working on it. That must have been just hit him like a ton of bricks. Yeah. As soon as we got back, you know, he he was a little bit apprehensive. He's like, man, the original lineup quit. This is so hard. I've been doing this for years. You know, as you can imagine, he was a little bit, you know apprehensive because you know it's just it's disheartening when you do it for so long and then you're working hard and all of a sudden well, you're, your used band to a, quits. you're used to a certain a certain momentum you know everything yeah. goes a certain way and then all of a sudden the rug gets ripped out from under you and i think that that is kind of the difference between people who are making it beyond the pandemic and people who are just falling flat and that's the end of it after it, the it's pandemic. hit or miss you got to find the right people that that's the thing because you never know till you get into it this is an age-old thing with bands a band gets together they rehearse they write songs and all of a sudden hey we just got offered this tour and the drummer or someone in the band's like oh i can't leave my job or all this stuff you know so they leave the band or you know a lot of people pass away especially well, in covid we yeah, lost that, so sure, many yeah. people not only to covid but to you know fall in addiction and all this other stuff so you do i mean the other members of the band have to be able to survive and go on from that. Yeah. So, so that's that's why uh, we picked Fred and Brad, and of course, you know, I've, I'm always a, a go getter. How'd you, know, you when, pick when Fred I, and Brad? If, if you guys are out there, you can call us on the live line and tell us all about call it up, too. Guys. By the way, yeah, you know, uh, you know, we, we love Brad. Uh, you know, he, he lives up in, in Northern California, so uh, you're thinking, well, maybe that's not the best choice because he doesn't live here. But we're like, no, Brad is the best choice because. He's a phenomenal bassist. He's a great singer, which it's great always to have, you know, other members well, singing in the band. Give us a second. And now he's here, live in the studio with us today. The man, the myth, the legend. Mark Torian has made the show. It is so good Carson, to see you. You have to give me a hug. Oh, I am so happy to have you on the show. I'm great. Even better now that you're here. We were just so just to bring you up to speed. We're just go. kind of backstorying oh, okay. Ira. I I kept it to like how Ira kind of hooked up with you and uh, okay. with the band. So make yourself comfortable. All right, you need awesome. to have Thank a little you. drink of water. <laughs> guys the traffic was, is insane i don't know why i mean i left literally about a, almost an hour ago yeah and i've been stuck on the freeway so it's the 101 freeway you know and you know it is what it is but it is what uh, it and is. i'm never well, late we've i hate being late worse. So. we've done worse right it's rock and roll i'm here hi everybody how's it going that's right and guys. and guys everybody is really Yay. excited because I was just talking about your longevity and how, oh, thank you. you know, the thing that makes a legend in, in the music industry today is not just your musical talent, because a lot of bands produce hit songs. And you certainly had yours starting with, you know, Smooth Up Enya and then just rolled on from there. Yes. And what was great, I was talking about that and I said, but the difference is, is that when you have longevity and you can just roll with the changes and challenges that life is bringing out you and i had no idea about what you had been through with the festival and ira started to fill us in and i said right. isn't that amazing so it was just the perfect setup for you coming into the studio today Ta -da! and <laughs> mark has been on the show a couple of times and he yes. has a huge audience with rock and sexy uncensored and people have you've you know we've dropped a couple of different yes we have things that you and guys thank you done. for having us i really so appreciate it and love you so dearly so thank you for we're so happy to have show. you back on the show. We're just stoked. We're excited. And when I found out that you were doing like a new a new record, yes. you guys have a new record, right? So yes. Yeah, are we, we calling it an album or we can we still or are we pressing LPs? Well, what are we there's, doing? There's still um, vinyl is still very, you know, very relevant. So we can still call it a record, I think. Right. OK, yeah. so you're going to be actually pressing uh, vinyls and putting them out. And, Right. God oh, yeah. willing, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's what our plans are. I'm so are, happy to I, hear I, that. You know, it's like it, we got to put out vinyl. We love vinyl, you know. So, and everybody really is uh, um, has rediscovered vinyl uh, right. for the past couple of years, especially since everybody's been locked down. And 
And maybe, that, maybe we'll do a VR record too, you know, so you can wear goggles and go on a date with Amber that Lynn would be while you're amazing. To our yes. records, Which is why we're you know, now, now I mean, we're talking. This is why we've moved up, guys, and we're TV media broadcast. Oh, That's what it feels the like here. Fans yes. want yes, to great. be here in the studio with us live with you guys. I love it. You know, That's and great. so it's not just about talking about your music oh, and sharing you. with them that way. But, you know, we're going out all over the world right now, and all the fans can tune in, whether they're on YouTube or they're on Facebook, whatever, social media platforms you're on. So you guys are here with us, and we are so happy to be able to share with you the new album, and it is called Holy Fuck. So Yes, it is called Holy what Fuck. What better person to introduce <laughs> that than me? Exactly. <laughs> totally. Right? Yeah, well, I guess we would be calling this our single. So yeah. this is our first single from an album that we are actually working on, and uh, we're really, really um, blessed and excited because we can announce today that we are uh, now signed with a company called Rock Avenue Records. Oh, awesome! And uh, which is a big thing for us to celebrate because um, it was a lot of hard work from Ira here and parties that be to um, find congruency and, and to actually be blessed with people that really get us and get the fact that uh, we still have a lot to say. And Absolutely. That we're writing stuff. Uh, you know, I, I, I like to call it dangerous. It, it, that might not be the right word for it, but it, it would be real rock and roll, real punk and roll, things that, you know, we're not, you know, we don't, we're not singing to tapes, or we're not singing to samples. We're, we're really putting it out there, real vocals, real thing, loud guitars, big drums. You know that maybe maybe that's kind of uh, passe these days, but I don't know. Just I'm so excited about the relevancy of what we're doing musically that uh, I've been through a lot in my personal life this past, uh, as we all have. Uh, uh, but I I lost my father here about three months ago. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I just left a long relationship that I've been in. Um, and I've gone through a, a kind of an awakening period, and I thank God that I was here because he's such an amazing, um, forget the musicality of Ira, but just as a person, uh, his thoughts and the way he, um, how he rolls through life, and he's taught me a lot of things because I'm a Virgo and I want everything like right now and you know, but we've worked really I'm hard. I'm a Virgo too. You know, yes, yes. I love you. Got it, we, we know want, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, so like, we get each so other like, wow, you know, and perfection and all this stuff and then and when something falls apart, it's very difficult for us to just go, okay, boom, because we yeah. need things to be perfect. Yes, I know yeah, and it's really and hard to, to really say Really hard but, on ourselves. But he's like that too, so it's, He's a lot more like Well, Jessica's that. a Virgo, so she's yeah. rubbed off on me. She yeah. told me to learn how to organize and pay attention. You know, I'm being an Aries, you know, very spontaneous. I just go, 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 and leave the wake behind me. But now I'm like, okay, let me organize it a little bit, make sure it's not too messy, you know. That's so. what's brilliant about, see, what's brilliant about this, um, this union of me and Ira, we've known each other a long, long time, and we've been planning on doing something musical together for quite a while I, I i can say that right yeah we talked about it many we, times yeah, I mean, so it's just the it's time like, just never happened let's do it. you know ah, I get it. i'm going on the road of you oh shoot i'm doing this so when things started when things went to rye um with the other situation uh it really left me in a really i mean i can't even tell you how i can just say it right now my heart was completely shattered not only from the situation but from some of the fans that came and said these really awful, awful things. And it kind of maybe wanted Trolls. to- Kind of wanted me to-, to Everybody's go, got them. Maybe wanted to really stop and quit <clears throat> and think about things and just take some time off. But Ira was like, dude, no, let's do this. We, we, we were already started working on this other project that we'll talk about in a minute, but together. And he says, listen, what if we do this? What if we go at it like this? Let's just go at a, a Let's just put out a record that just undeniable with me and you working on it, Fred and Brad, we could do something really, really special that people haven't heard in a long time. And, you know, I took the day and I said, you know what, he's right. I, I, it, we can do something and I'm ready to do something. And it's gonna take a lot of work. We're gonna start from the bottom up again, but we're doing it and here we are. 
So we've it's like the stars align, you know, when you have the right yeah, people man. that come together, you know, it's for uh, real, for real. We, we had worked on this other song I for another project. I couldn't a better person because we were just uh -huh. at like dinner that one after the last show. Remember, we were all at dinner and oh, we were yeah. talking totally. about the music and stuff like that. And, and, and I've known Mark through my show and through people for years. And for even before. Yeah, yeah. And if I would have heard that something like this had happened with the, you know, the other members of the band, I would have said it w that would be the first first person I would think of would be let's go to Ira I right. you know and and it is it's totally. like a small town so you have to be careful in the industry you know how you handle not only your en entrances and your hits and your greatness but how you handle your exits because it is a small town and when you do Absolutely. just rip the rug out from somebody <laughs> and then move on um, without thinking or doing the right thing, then it, it will come back on you eventually. It so does, especially I'm, in this town, you know? Like, yeah, and so but, I'm just so grateful to see that you guys were able to pick up the pieces because you were meant, you, ha you know, the universe has more work for you. you it has, it needs you there here you to create more and to put more stuff out there. Well, it, it also humbles us, you know, because oh, of all gosh. the things that come Thank over you. the years, yeah. Totally and, wrong. you know, you know, we don't like to sit here and say, oh, I'm a badass. When other people say, okay, yeah. great. You know, but we put in all this hard work and stuff. And I know Mark doesn't want to hear and say, I'm the fucking baddest singer I ever lived. But let me tell you something. I'll sit over here on the other side from my perspective. After doing that one first song with them and then the Bullet Boys thing happened, I was just like, I already knew what I had, what we could do. Because the first words that came out of his mouth when we were recording was so magical and perfect. I was just like, hmm, in the back of my mind, I'm like, Oh my God, I could do a hundred songs with this freaking guy. You know, like, oh my God, this is like the real deal. You know, sometimes you're in a studio and someone's singing, you're like, you're thinking, okay, it's going to need a lot of work. Okay. Hey, let's yeah. try this. Let's see. I didn't have to do any of that. It was just like, whoa, keep, keep going. You know, it's like, keep going. Keep, it's like, oh my God, I'm just thinking, this is like, you know, and that was the first song on a side project. So when the Bullet Boys thing happened, I said, okay, I started getting excited because I knew what I can bring because I'd been working all and he's During sending the pandemic, me songs, yeah, and, and, like <laughs> all these riffs and songs and stuff, and I'm like so In a period of two weeks, I sent so him like exciting. 10 songs. Yep. I kept cranking around every day, and he's and like, more. Send me oh more. my God, I was yeah. you know, got excited and stuff. Totally. But. Okay, well, I guess we've teased you guys enough, ah. right? We're just like teasing and teasing and teasing and teasing, yes, and guess yes. what? So why don't we set the song up for everybody out there right now? What's yeah. behind it? What is it about? You Are know, you ready? I, I think, do you want to, do we, should we say it's like, I, you know, I'm always this type of person. I think Ira might be a little bit like that too. When you're presenting a song to somebody, I always like them to have their own feeling about what the song is about. But I can share with you that Ira did direct this video um, for the song. And when we wrote the song, we had gone so much, gone through so, all of us all together, everywhere around the planet. We've been locked down for so long that it, we wanted to put out just a burner and just to ask people, you know, what's going on? What, why is this the way it is? Can someone sh tell me what the hell is going on? What the fuck's going on? You know, basically. And and then, you know, in the lyrical content, there's, um, you know, basically somebody that's having an epiphany about somebody or something that they're with or, or that they're in or they're involved with that is not working the right way. Something that you love might Are not you be ready? good for you. Let's yeah. do it. You know I mean? Let's yeah. hear it. Yeah. Here it you is, you guys. Good for you. The <laughs> debut. Here it is. Holy fuck. Yes.
Wow, they have a new album out, guys. It's called Holy Fuck. They have a new music video. You did not see it no. there. That's the behind the scenes making of the new music video. So yes. we're going to tease you just a little bit more on that. They'll be touring throughout August. They have three dates available coming up in LA. They're going to be at the Canyon Club. Yes. So they're going to be coming up at the Canyon Club. What is it, August? What are your dates July. on July. Oh, July. Actually, yeah. Okay, so they're coming up July. a little sooner. I thought we were going right to give you guys. Here. So you better get out there and get your tickets. We have been just going and burning the candle at all ends. Like, it's Ju- insane. July 15th at the Canyon in Agora. July 16th at the Canyon in Santa Clarita. And then... July 22nd, the following weekend on Friday at the Canyon in Montclair. And then, of course, Mark and I, on Saturday, the very next day, we'll be playing an acoustic show yes. in Hollywood at the Federal. Yes. So we have a busy... So you're yes. doing an acoustic version of Holy Fuck, the single we just heard now? Uh, we, we, well, we, we haven't uh, talked about it yet. <laughs> wow, that's amazing because oh, I was just thinking hey. my first thoughts on the new single. I don't know if you guys have the same. And fans, you're welcome to call in. The call yeah, in number please call is right us there. In. Call us, tell us what you think of the new music. Come and say hello. Talk to the band. Please We're here. come and say hello we want to, to us. hear from you. <laughs> but the first thing I thought of was, and I keep going back to it because it's like you guys are really known for Smooth Up In Ya. And that, when it dropped, and the song in, too. In 1988. Yeah, absolutely. It was like it was hard, heavy, hard. Yeah, man. And now I was just thinking, it has. You guys have like taken turbos and strapped them on. Yes. The band now and taken it to the next level of metal, which metal has evolved. It has come so far. Full and you guys were one of the originals. Thank you. Thank right. You. Absolutely. We, we we always 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 Mark and I are on the same page with this. You know, it's it's just the truth. Music is interconnected from the beginning. You, you go back to the blues. It all started there. That's where rock and roll started with the blues. You know, so all the way up to metal, you can draw the lines. Of course, they mix classical from you know European stuff too to bring it up to metal. But it's like blues is where rock and roll came from. Yeah, absolutely. You right. know. And of course, the Bolt Boys, like the first record. I mean, that that was blues all over. That was a Gosh, blues totally. rock band just laying well, it down. Well, you guys did a cover for. Um, you had a cover song that you did for the love of money. Yes. Wasn't that originally a, done as a cover song for the? Wasn't the OJ? No, that's a, actually that was written uh, by the OJs, and we did it as a cover. And right, it was as co- a as a metal Motown blues. Yeah. Yes. There you go. You know, and right. that was kind of like I would say that was my homage to um to when i was signed with motown so when i was a kid right. so um when we did that song now we're gonna leave now we're gonna uh, sashay into another thing that me and i are doing we're actually recutting we're, we're redoing uh, another song from the motown era um and i can i say what it is yeah sure why not well, I, I, don't, I don't know oh no no they, they, we, 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 when you hear what we've done with it no, no, one's, no, 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 no. no one's thinking yeah, about no, doing no, no. this copyright no, no, no. I, I i dare <laughs> we're, we're, we, we're we're redoing a song called standing in the shadows of love oh and it is one of my favorite tunes uh and i just gave ira was talking to ira we got what do you think about this and i was singing it to him and he goes that's it, done. He, he, he goes, I'm gonna go and cut it. So that night he actually cut it, sent it to me, and it's just like this outrageous rock tune that I can't even say it's rock. It sounds really futuristic. Like it's really got this um, uh, Blade Runner type of sound to it, you know? And, and by the way, I'm, I'm so excited the fact that we actually got to, sh- um, to talk about the process of the video. I'm really excited for Ira because he, he got the chance to do the storyboarding and directing of it. I gave him open carte blanche. He had the beautiful idea of doing things and how we kind of made a, a bit of a mini movie and how we showed the aspects of downtown Los Angeles, yeah. which I just love. And uh, we were able to, to really focus on that and to do something that maybe fans or um, just people in general haven't seen that. And it was really something that was a lot of hard work uh, and it was a hard up. What is it uh, like a trout swimming upstream? It was it was difficult, but what we achieved out of it and how people met, everybody managed to just say, okay, listen, I'm gonna step out of my own way. Let's go with the flow. It all got done, and we got something that's just beautiful. I mean, 
some, that people are really going to be like, you got to be kidding me. How do I pull picked this up off, on that know? watching totally. the making of the music video. I picked up on that. I, I didn't know any part of this backstory other than there was a new lineup. And I would have never guessed about what I heard by watching you guys work together because it just seemed like you were going on to the next thing and you were super excited and you could see it. You could see it in the way that you were talking about it, oh, you know, you. on the the, uh, the music video that I saw, the making of the music video. So besides Ira Black being new to the band, let's talk about the rest of the lineup, yeah, okay? Yeah. We've got a new bassist. We have a, nu- right, a new yes. drummer. Tell us about these guys. How'd you hook up with them? Who are they? Well, I... I sh- Really easily, uh, I can say that um, uh, Jessica Chase, who's uh, who's working in management right now for the band, uh, managed to put t- to get people together. Uh, she had a plethora of different musicians that she works with, put together all these line of people, and and we just kind of looked and said, well, what do you think about this guy? What do you think? Well, I don't know about that guy. Blah blah blah. But I've always liked Fred because I was able to see him at the Tuesday Night Champs. And is I- it aching or awking? I call him Fred Aking. Fred Aking. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it originally says a ching. A ching. But, yeah, but, but, yeah. but everybody like always says Aking, so he said, well, I just roll with it. He you went know, with it. Right. Yeah. rad. So Fred is the new drummer of the band. Yes. Amazing. Right. I mean, just here's the thing. The Bullet Boys is a certain feeling and attitude. Let's just put it that way. With Brad, myself, Ira and Fred, it is that it's the attitude from when the band first started for me. The the wanting the wanting it, uh, the the love for just music and playing for itself, the a bit the ability to be really humble and have humility and, and to be this loving person. That's what Fred and Brad are. Fred's been through a lot musically, he's been through a lot of ups and downs, a lot of low downs. Uh, he's one of the most incredible drummers and percussionists that I've ever played with. He uh, uh, hails from Peru, came out here to the States. His attention to detail is wow. just, it's just in, in, impeccable and insane. Yeah, it's like. And then Brad Lang, who was, for all intents and purposes, playing with uh, one of my fave bands, uh, Y&T. Y&T, which know. is my wow. roots. You know. Y&T was the reason I used to come up to L.A. back Dude, in the 80s. Totally. Long before I became anything, a model, an actress, or any of that, when I would come up and want to see Y&T at the Starwood, and we were like huge yeah. Y&T fans. And then after a while, like people like Y... I, and I thought Y&T would be the next... Right. You know. Yeah. Whoever, you know. Put it this way. If, if Y&T, boys, Crew, if Y&T is on your resume, you don't have to audition for a gig. Yeah. You just say, right. no. would you play with Y&T? Yeah. Okay, you're in. You, you're you want to play with us? Sure. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, and, and he is, again. He's, yeah. that, he's that good, too. I mean, he, he's Gosh. great. And the sweetest guy. I mean, yeah, also, man. by the way, I mean, wow. you know, what makes a band work in the end is if people get along. So right. there you go. Well, you know, well, these I are all easygoing, nice guys. People get along they have to want to get along, yeah. you know? And being in a band is like being in a long-term relationship. It, it, you know, it doesn't just happen by itself. The, the, everybody goes into this honeymoon phase and they're like, wow, this is really great and it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be awesome. And then all of a sudden you're like, I hate you and I want to, And yeah. you, gotta, you gotta go beyond these things, you know, in, in business and in all of it. And you have to be able to work together, continue working together. I remember back in the day, Back in the day, years ago, I was involved with Aerosmith, was on the road touring with Pump, and I was involved with one of the players that was with the band. And they used to have to bring in a therapist, like before the gig, so that they could go in the back and have these long therapy sessions just so they could continue playing together because they had played together for so long long that they had these backstories you know we come in with our shopping carts full of all our bullshit you know and then it was, sometimes somebody has to come in and just unload it freshen yeah, it that's up that's great sometimes you, know? you need help a third party to come in neutrally and you whatever know, it kind takes of help get stiff, you know that's you just... know whatever it takes as long as you're willing to just continue to grow and work towards it i know it you know for me there's been a lot of things in life once you get a little a little bit older and you start to mature you realize that you know we got to show up to this world and when something happens like the pandemic it's like we yes. all get the bottom kicked out from under us and we Absolutely. realize that if we want to continue to be here be creative be artist and produce and grow 
in in our dreams, then we have to be flexible. And that's like the number one thing is flexibility. So And you have to have a feeling of wanting to do something special. Um, sometimes people get into a rut and they're thinking they have these uh, I call them suburban rock dad mentalities. And you have to have a worldly mentality. You have to have a mentality of that you want to do something other than hanging out and doing something here. I mean, I want to travel with Ara. I don't be sitting in Barcelona having a cup of coffee with him doing shows. I mean, I want to be doing things that that are worldly. Worldly. I mean, well, I'll, you'll definitely I'll, eat in some good vegan restaurants with Ira. Oh no, that's absolutely. the one thing. I and always, also. <laughs> follow him he's on he's always posting the pictures like he's in like where were you you were in germany you were yeah, in man. somewhere else you were in somewhere else and you guys are like we're in this great vegan restaurant i'm like oh that looks good but yeah oh, i'm just yeah. uh there's some people stop and they hit a wall i've never done i've never been that type of person i, I always think that um how would you say a change is a good thing uh change opens up other things and you know Sometimes you just gotta get rid of negativity and all this 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 weight, to so the universe can come and shine on you and, and open up something and say, here it is all along, you know. Oh wow, I didn't know that, you know. This is great. So, no matter what it is, uh, we have a great relationship with the four of us. We laugh and and just about all kinds of stuff and laugh. We are able to laugh at each other. And it just it which makes sense. There's not this stiff thing of, of I don't know like. I don't have e e g o. I'm I'm not an egotistical dude. I I am more of a person that wants to give t to this other person for, uh, and I want to be part of the team <clears throat> than just just me. I've always been like that, but you know I, some people aren't like that. And, so. and we like to have fun. We we just played this brought fest in Wisconsin yes. a few weeks ago, so and you rad. see Mark's uh, on Facebook Live or, yeah. or Instagram Live. Yeah, yeah. So he he went Instagram Live at the festival, and my phone beeps oh mark's live because he was in a different part of the festival i was like eating a vegan brat backstage and all of a sudden I which see were mark. very very good too by the yeah way. that was awesome yeah, and they were awesome. great there so, so, so i click on the link and uh, okay now i'm watching mark live at the festival from thing and then he invites me so i go in the video so now i'm part of his video and then we bring our and then we bring <laughs> our funny how then we bring our drummer in and we have a bunch of videos so, going it was so ridiculous and we're walking around the festival so uh, brad and i are in this one and fred him or another one we're walking but around what the festival i want to like, know guys fun, is you know? how are yeah. you bringing yeah. the fans into it today how are you guys keeping in touch with your fans and what do the fans think of the new music well we haven't sprung that on them yet so it's just happening we, now we're right? getting ready to drop yeah we're getting ready and to of drop course on. coming out of the pandemic you know it, when music first started happening again it was like no uh, backstage, no uh, meet and greets because yeah. you know people are still scared and stuff. So yeah. this right. stuff is slowly getting brought back in. So we're you did play at the whiskey last week though, didn't yeah, yeah, you? Yeah. Or a couple weeks ago, you guys? No, did, uh, last Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Last Friday they were at the whiskey, guys. So Phenomenal. there will be more dates. Sold out. It was awesome. In fact, we, we wouldn't we, hung out there, everybody. And we, stuff. Yeah, we, so. we went. Um, and you you weren't able to do a meet and greet after the show. No, well, no, not really. We have because, people backstage hanging out. With no, us. no, no, but because we went on, and I just want to thank everybody. I love you, Hollywood. You know how much I love you so hard. Thank you for sticking around till one fifteen in the morning to when we went on and staying there and staying through the whole show. I love you so hard, and thank you, Hollywood. And I think the whole band can thank you. Is probably one of the latest things times I've ever ever gone on. It was running a little bit late. We're like, Holy uh oh. Cow. Like, you know, yeah. So it was like unbelievable. But everybody stayed and we had a party and it was great and it was magical. And I just want to thank everybody for being so uh supportive to us and uh things were things were happening that it, 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 we had Where the piss, do the fans we, we, go for tour dates and stuff like that guys so they can you know go well uh, obviously web? to the bullet boys instagram page the uh, bullet boys facebook. um facebook page do you have the website up is the website going up is it, it up we're or? working on it right now yeah. holy okay. fuck dot com so stay <laughs> on the instagram page yeah. if you search that be careful what you might find yeah right yeah. Don't. <laughs> Not Don't be scared. Me, guys. They're used to it. They're just all like, what? Don't what? Scared. Okay. And, and of course, you can go to our personal pages, Absolutely. Mark Torian's uh, in, uh, per, uh, official Instagram page, my official Instagram go page. Twitter, Bullet Boys on Twitter. Yeah, I mean, you know, on, it's not that hard to find. Everywhere. Just search our name and they, they pop up everywhere, you know. But we are getting but. ready to, our press release comes out uh, here next Thursday. Next Thursday. And um, 
we're you know we're just this is a this is just a single right now we're going to be hope we're going to be dropping an album here in the latter part of the year and um, hopefully the latter part of summer but what we're going to what we're working on right now is just a an amazing body of work for everybody i mean i well I, if I, this is the start of it i can't wait to yeah, see what you guys go. come up with let's with go, the girl. rest of it guys let's go this is going to be amazing and oh, i'm happy you. for you and oh, you know what you, what what do you have to say to like these young metal new metal bands that are coming up that are looking at you mark and they're seeing like you've been around for so long and 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 what kind of advice do you have to give them believe in yourself when nobody else does love on yourself when nobody else does shine like a diamond if you know that you can and work so diligently on your writing skills and what you put out as far as music. There's so much competition and so many beautiful and amazing artists these days. I, I mean, yeah, there it's is. just There's like, a lot of good music it's, it's beyond, I mean, like, um, it's beyond. It, 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 it's a different way of life, you know. Yeah. Um, if you're doing it to make money, then get out now. Absolutely. You know, um, it, it's art. Yeah, it's art first and foremost. How you know? true is that? Now? <laughs> it's art it's first. You know, I, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I second you, that. Exactly. Emotion. It's art first and foremost. You you, you yes. should lead with with your your love and your care for the craft of what it is you're doing, and you but know, really and, care about that craft. You know, right now you have the opportunity to take that time. Uh, uh, artists, don't push your stuff out so quickly. Work on it. Put it together. Take it apart. Put it together. Take it apart. Let it simmer. Take it apart, put it back together. That's when you have a, a smash or, or it's Hitley or something that's, and listen, I don't have the answers for everything, please. I'm just, m what I've done in my past and what me and I would do, how we put something together, don't we? Take it apart, we yeah. put it back together. In fact, Ira, um, all kudos to Ira. He produced this single and it's going to be the producer of the record. He, We are in good hands with Mr. Black. So Mr. Black is the producer now. Yeah, yeah, wow, yes, he's Black. worn a lot of hats. Mr. And now Black. he's actually got another one. Mr. So, Black is Don't give me another pandemic. Don't give me another pandemic. He's going to see what I come up with. <laughs> I got to ask, Ira, I got to ask you one question. Are you still playing with your vagina on stage for in front of all your fans? Well, you know, I am sponsored by Dean Guitars, so I do stick to the script with that because I... Oh, I, so you I, got another one. It's changed now. No, no, no. I, I've been with Dean okay. from the beginning. I, I had the a couple of those guitars of I got from my guitar friend. Guys, how how could I resist that? getting a couple of vagina guitars? Of course I had to. It, it, that was my friend who made but, those for me. And But it's okay. You can always throw his vaginas my way, and I'll play with the vagina on yeah. stage. There you go. Live. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth up in you on a vagina. Right? I've been known to do that about it. Well, you won't get into that. So check back later in the year, guys, because they got an album coming out. So we're going to have to bring the guys back Amber, on. this is so spooky right? sexy. This I, I, gonna... I did want to give a shout out, too, because he mentioned the, the whiskey show the other night. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. yes. And, of course, uh, Mark has done this before, but he was talking about change and doing stuff different. We're pushing forward, trying to do new and interesting different things here. Uh we had the, the Pistolettes, which are uh, backup singers that Thank sing you, for Bolt Boys. Yes. So his sister, uh, we also had Holly West, uh, so we had, Nick, Fred's, uh, yes. uh, his sister Gabby. So, so, we had, so we had Nikki Moran, we had Holly, yep, and we Holly. had um, Kitten, Kitten, who sings backup vocals. For Paul Stanley's Soul Station. Yes. I met her at Chris Santos' She's wedding a few amazing. weeks previous, and I said, please come sing with the Bullet Boys. And she said, yeah, gave me her number. She came, so Paul Stanley's backup singer came and sang with us. Amazing. Oh, my night. God, that's so exciting. And, and we also and had uh, 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 Emily V. Yeah, Emily V, an incredible violinist who plays so with us at beautiful. Ultimate Channel like, all the time. Amazing gal. So she came so up talented. and played uh, a Swish, Lots of Swish reasons, Bay Butterfly guys, with uh, Mark. keep on following yes. the Bullet Boys. Yeah, that, that was, <laughs> We will have them back on the show. Please. Awesome. We, we will absolutely you. have them back on the show. In the meantime, follow them at all the places that you see at the bottom of our screen right yes. now. And check them out on their IG page. Yes. You are listening to us and watching us live on the UBNGO.com network, rockandsexyuncensored.com. I want to thank Mark Torian for making it into the studio today. Good luck with Holy Fuck. Thank you for fuck. the invite. Thank and you. Ira K. Black, you guys us. are I want to like know what the fuck is up. Me. 
Thank you Bye. to all of our fans. Thank you, Amber. Thank you, Amber. Woo! Thank you for tuning in to Amber Lynn's Rockin' Sexy Uncensored, available on rockinsexyuncensored.com. Don't forget to hit us up on all your favorite social media links and tune in next week for another amazing episode of Rockin' Sexy Uncensored. Awesome.